G'day fellas, welcome to another video, not a casted game, we are going to be talking about Chinese base building today and we're going to be talking about the future of China because in my opinion, the future of China is highly likely to be fast imperial. Now that doesn't mean naked fast imperial, we're still going to make units and it depends on the map that you're playing but I'm going to show you exactly why the base building has changed for China and what you need to do differently and the primary reason why is because of the spirit way. It is a landmark in age 4 that we never used to use before or at least we used to use it but it was very rarely but now it's going to play a high impact role. So let's jump in, let's take a look exactly how you're going to build a perfect Chinese base. So I've got a whole bunch of extra resources here, that's just for the demonstration, uh, don't worry about that. So you're normally going to start off, you're going to be sending your vills out towards a, uh, out towards a, um, out towards uh, food. So typically you're going to want to do that out towards the berries. Uh, now, when you've got your berries, there's a couple of ways that you can place your mill, whether you want to tuck it in nice like this. Most people are going to want to do that. Personally, I I'm absolutely fine by just putting your mill out here. And the reason why is because you're not really going to be relying on your berries. You're going to be relying on your sheep. So by having the mill closer to your town center, it's going to help you out with your imperial official because your imperial official He's going to need to be dropping off gold non-stop. Next up, you're going to have your house. House, it doesn't really matter where this one goes. It's not a big deal. Uh, ideally, you just want to try and place it uh, relatively close to your mill, just like that, so you're going to minimize walking distance. Uh, so after that, you're going to be starting to think about your lumber camp. Now, lumber camp is another one of those things where you're going to have two lumber lines. You've got your one that's closest to you, which is over here, and then you've got the one that's a little bit further away. Um, so let's supervise that just to emulate what we're up to. And let's say we want to take wood. Now, where are we going to be taking that? We're going to take it on our closest one but the, the key thing here is we're thinking about our imperial academy we ideally want to put it in a place where it's going to be able to touch our imperial academy as well as our lumber camp so that's going to be a, a very strong key here so we're going to drop our lumber camp down just here on that front side and then we're going to think about our imperial academy and we're going to look exactly where we want it this is, a, this is a great spot right here but another good spot would be here and the reason why you would take this spot here over uh, this spot behind the town center, uh, one tile over, is because you want it to get uh, nice and snug up against this uh, position as, as close as possible. So if, if we have a look here, uh, so you can see with the Imperial Academy, it still gets the, the mill, and that's what's really important to, to hit that mill. Um, so let's, let's continue just gathering or, or training villagers right now just to sort of emulate that sort of mid-game play. Uh, so you might start thinking about like a dynasty or something like that. Uh, so what you can also do is is with your Barbican, ideally you want to be looking to have it outside the the influence area of your Imperial Academy. That's going to be really, really important. So even the, the area that you want to go is two tiles outside the influence. So just here, this is perfectly fine. Uh, you can drop it here. Obviously, that's not the best spot. You probably want to go down on the front, but it, that, that's not what the purpose of this is. We're just trying to, trying to look at it. So now you're in age two, you're going to start thinking about, okay, where do I want to drop my, my buildings? That's a good question. So this is where it starts to get a little bit weird, a little bit interesting because it's very finicky. So I'm going to show you guys a representation of, of what it should look like or what your, your base could look like with the barracks representing every single building um, militaristic or military and, and otherwise. Um, so what you would do is you want to look... Your, the best way to do it is to actually go from one tile in from the edges on both sides. So you can see there. So that would be a great place to, to place our barracks. Okay, and then from there, what we're going to do is we're going to take that, that placement of the barracks and that's going to be our guideline. And we can now put all of our barracks at the front. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so you've got all of them beautifully in a row and you can see how that actually extends the influence of your Imperial Academy. So that's really key. Uh, and then further to that, we can actually, on the corners, you can put the bigger buildings, like the uh, the Blacksmith is, is a good one. Uh, also, if you're thinking about going to age three, uh, then it might be a good idea to put your astronomical clock tower on the corner. Now, obviously this is all, you know, we're talking about, you know, theoretical base building in a perfect world. And it's not always gonna be a perfect world. So it, it's important that when you're thinking about base building and, and doing things like this, um, that you're not losing sight of the goal you know that, that, that's what's important uh, it, it, you don't don't let uh base building get in the way of you actually playing the game don't let it get in the way of you you uh, trying or trying to win the game as well because you can dedicate a lot of time to this it's important not to so wh where does the chinese fast imperial come in how does it work so it all comes down to positioning on the archery rangers so the archery rangers, you're going to be making up to eight archery rangers, and they are in very specific locations, and I'm going to show you exactly where they are. So they are along here. So by the, by the time in the late game, 
that uh, by the time in the late game that the the um, that you are wanting to do this. So let, let's say you wanted to start off uh, with your archery ranges. Uh, where are you going to be looking to do that? Uh, so you're doing it right here. Uh, so from from this corner, once again, like we had the um, like we had the the barracks uh, down towards the south side. We're going to have the archery range up towards the north side, and it's coming in once again over here uh, on that same spot, but it's on the back side. Of this imperial academy uh and and not towards the the main town center and there's a very specific reason for that so from there uh so we're, gonna, we're just going to delete that mill because you know it, it's late it, it's late game um and we're going to filled in our other archery ranges before then so this is this is where it starts to get a little bit weird so these are the archery ranges here i i i, I realize i appreciate that it might be difficult to remember exactly where to put all of these bad boys down uh j just simply because um they're not going to be in the um in the in the best spot let's just put it that way uh, but so w what we're going to be doing is putting our uh, our spirit way is going to be popped right down in here. And I know you might think that that's a little bit weird because you're putting the spirit way inside the influence of the Imperial Academy. But I promise you, there is a reason. There is a, a reason why that this is this is the way that it is. Uh, so I'll keep building now. So we're going to drop down. We're going to finally drop down that uh, that last archery range. We're going to continue to add in archery ranges over here when we get the chance. You can see I'm trying my best to chop through it um, and. Uh, I mean, we, we can also fill out the rest of the base as well. So you can see that we can we can add in like that. We're going to have, have pretty perfect. Um, and, you know, you, you can throw in whatever you want over on this side as well. Unfortunately, don't have enough villagers to clear that one out yet. Uh, but what, what's going to happen here is this is going to drop down the cost of your Chikunu. And that is really why this base building happens this way. Also drops down the cost of the Grenadier. But the Chokunu uh, is genuinely... In my opinion, the most insane late game unit that there is. I don't actually think there's anything that can beat it except for one unit. It's English Men at Arms. They're the only unit that can actually beat it in the late game. Nothing else can beat it. Not longbows, not uh, not uh, Men at Arms, not even lances. You can have 30 plus lances uh, fully upgraded with armor. They will still lose to the Chokunu. Uh, and so that, that is essentially that is that is the base building, the, the way that you would do it. Uh, and then you would you would loop those around uh, down around this side like that. Uh, let's just delete these, get these out of the way. So you would drop that. So that would be your your eight archery ranges down here. And then that way, they're all within the influence of the Imperial Academy. They're all in, in the influence of the Spirit Way as well. Uh, so that's it. And then from, from there, you know, if you want to drop down stables or whatnot, or, or even if you want to drop down more archery ranges, go for it. Because this is going to be dropping down the, the cost of the Chokunu from 20, 30, 30 to 14, 21, 21 which is massive. It is a 30% reduction. That is so absolutely huge. Uh, and, you know, in addition to that, you can further supervise these guys uh, so that they're coming out even faster. Uh, and, and that's going to really buff them up. Uh, when, it, when it comes to placing uh, your, um, your farms in the late game, uh, at the moment, I am quite honestly just in the mindset that granaries probably aren't even worth it just because uh, i'll just quickly demonstrate okay let, let's say you grab a whole bunch of vills let's say chuck all these guys back let's grab eight vills okay so if you if you wanted to drop farms really quickly how would you do it you would go mill and then you would go for a farm 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 boom that's it less than a second of my attention is over there okay but now let's say i want to drop a granary or oh, sorry a granary uh you drop the granary down and then you try and put the farms down. Look where it starts. The farm starts here, 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 here. Can you see that? And this this is not optimal. This is not optimal at all. And I I know that it's not optimal and a lot of people would, would, wouldn't mind. And per personally, I, the, I play games where I drop granaries and this is what my farms look like. And I, I just leave it. I just leave it because I can't be bothered to do it. So obviously, you know, the optimal granary uh, looks like this where you've got your farms perfectly neatly stacked around. But the, the reality of the matter is it's so hard to do compared to this when you're when you're playing it like, you know, 200 APM. Th that, that is just so much easier to think about. I, I just set it and forget it. I just grab eight vills, boom, 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 boom. Never have to think about it, never have to worry about it at all. Uh, in addition to that, this takes up a lot of space. So in, in some of my games, uh, it is it is very rare that I'm actually going for granaries. But in the event that you do, what you want to typically do is uh, look to put them all in, in a similar spot. So uh, let's... I'm, I'm kind of tempted just to drop this guy down here just so that we've got a bit more vision up towards the back of our base. Um, so let's... You know, let's let's get rid of these guys because we'll we'll just quickly talk about that. Uh, I'll be showing you guys a, a recorded game as well, um, just to to demonstrate this completely. Uh, but ideally, yeah, what you would be looking to do is have all of your your granaries stacked in the same spot, um, or, or very very close to each other. 
Delete, delete, delete. Okay, so you can see we've got a bit of a gold mine up here. Uh, so I guess we'll, we'll just leave that for the moment. Um, and... I mean, if, if you were going to put something down, here, here's like an open space here, right? Towards this side. So you, you would go for, essentially what I do is I, I try and look and make sure I've got like a two tile gap and then I'll just start clicking like that. And you can see it's not efficient, but that, that's essentially it. And you know, by, by that time, the wood line's probably eaten out as well. Uh, so you can you can throw in a few more like that. And th that's essentially it. That, that is how I would do my farms. That's my base building for China in the late game with those farms. But that's really it. That 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 is the key to the Chinese base building. But let's talk a little bit more about Fast Imperial, about why it's so strong at the moment, because it all comes down to the power of the Chukunu. Uh, so I'm gonna, th I can show you a couple of, of different replays. They're all on Hill and Dale. I don't know why my match history, the, the game keeps giving me Hill and Dale. Uh, for some reason, I've gotten Hill and Dale out of my last 10 games, I would I would suspect like six times. Uh, you can see Hill and Dale, Hill and Dale, Hill and Dale. Uh, actually, no, it's, it's not as bad as it looks. Oh, I guess some of those are skirmishes though, aren't they? Uh, but yeah, you can see there's there's like three down here. Uh, so I got lots of different matchups. Uh, I've got uh, against English here, um, which was a, a fast Imperial victory. Um, I've got uh, another one here. This is probably the best one here uh, to demonstrate. This is against Sailor Moon. Sailor Moon's a pretty decent player. Um, and I, I think probably ranked about top 50, maybe top 100, something like that. So not too bad. Um, and I'll, sh I'll show you the, the concept of base building as well as this, this death push that comes out from China because it's very, very difficult uh, to stop this and just the way that it melts absolutely everything. So just your standard Chinese opening here. We talked about this before. Uh, now, unfortunately, it's, it's not a very good spawn with regard to our Imperial Academy placement. Uh, so you can see that our lumber camp is going to have to go on this side, our mill over on that side. So I'm not even sure if we can actually get an Imperial Academy that, that fits that. We might be lucky uh, here, here to fit the Imperial Academy in. Uh, but what I've been doing, I've been going 3TC, Song Dynasty. Yeah, three town centers, Song Dynasty. That's what I've been doing. And I'll, I'll show you just some of the consequences of it because you're playing up against the Holy Roman Empire. What are they going to do? Well, they're going to go, they're going to fast castle. They're going to take the relics and then they're going to go Imperial. Okay, that's fine. Give me 10 minutes and I'll, I'll show you what I can do. Imperial Academy coming down. So we managed to hit the mill. We managed to hit the uh, mining camp, managed to hit the, uh, the lumber camp as well. Uh, so we're very happy campers right now. Um, and uh, one of the other things you can see, I'm, I'm building my second town center. Hold on. Hold on. Just give me a second here. There we go. Uh, so, <laughs> so you can you can see that uh, with regard to the placement of the town center, I make sure it's outside the radius of this, just because I might need to use it later in the game. Second town center comes down, so we're on two town centers uh, and Song Dynasty at this point. So we have the equivalent of four and a half town centers. So at the nine minute mark, our enemies on twenty seven villages. He's just got up to the castle age. He's going to start taking his relics out on the middle of the map. You can see prelates are out there, but we're okay. We're minding our own business. We've, we've got our walls up. Everything is good. Uh, and we're going to start looking to take other sources of food. Um, so we're on 46 villages. He's on 27. So we're already up by 20 villages. And that's going to continue to grow. And this is why I think Fast Imperial for China, is, it just makes so much sense because you can invest all of those resources nice and early into the game. And it makes it very difficult. Now, a little bit of a, a misplay right here from me uh, with regard to the placement of the archery rangers. Uh, these guys are, are technically one tile uh, too close to the Imperial Academy. We've got that age three coming up. And once again, my, my mill is up in this position. There was no other real decent spot for me to put this down. You could see, I could have gone over on this side, but ideally I wanted to do it with my food villages. So I was just like, you know, what? I'm just going to chuck it here, my uh, my, my clock tower. Uh, so now what I'm doing is in, in the transition period, so we're at the 12 minute mark, uh, I'm going very heavy onto stone. And the idea here is that I need to I'm, I need to have enough resources to be able to drop a keep. I don't have to drop a keep. I just need to be able to drop a keep. But because as China, you can drop a keep very, very quickly. And ideally, you don't even want your enemy to know that you've got the potential to drop a keep. But keep in mind, keep in mind, this guy, he's playing the Holy Roman Empire. He's putting relics inside these outposts. And holy shit, man, it's so oppressive. Look at look what, look at the range on the, um, the Springled. He is killing my villagers over here with that sprinkled emplacement outpost, 10.8 range. It's so busted, it's so good. Uh, so now he's going Imperial behind this, 13 minute Imperial timing, so not too bad. He's farming up as well. So everything he's doing is correct, right? We're at the 13 minute mark. He, he's captured, how many of the relics has he taken? He's taken every single relic. So you can see he's got one relic coming back towards the uh, the Regnets. Uh, I suspect he's probably got a second relic coming back somewhere as well. But you can see he's got one relic here, one relic here, uh, probably another relic at the front. Yeah, another relic at the front here. So he's got full line of sight into my base uh, because of that. Uh, and I suspect there's the second relic now. Uh, so he's got all five relics. He's going to start taking sacred sites. In fact, he's already started taking sacred sites. We've already got the sacred counter uh, is, is coming up uh, at, at this point. But 
He's just about to hit Imperial. Pause the game. He is on 35 villages. What's your estimate for how many villas I'm on? He's on 35? I'm on 90 villages at this point in the game. 90 villages. So you might be thinking of, you know, Palace of Swabia goes brrr. Yeah, Palace of Swabia goes brrr. You know what else goes brrr? Song Dynasty 3 TC. That's what goes brrr. So behind this, you know, we're, we're just doing everything that we're used to. Uh, the, the one adaptation we're making is we're getting a trebuchet uh, because the trebuchet is going to have to deal with these outposts because these these things are locking down our resources. We can't access these berries uh, because of this outpost. I, I, am, I can't expand down towards this position because the, the outpost actually is, is taking stuff out um but now we're going to add in more of our archery ranges we're going to ring them around and even just a small amount of archery ranges like this is perfectly fine trebuchet are doing trebuchet things just trying to path down towards this outpost but of course you guys know how it is uh so still no aggression coming out from him uh so we're now at the 17th minute uh so 17 minutes 30 seconds we'll call that our benchmark we'll wait for him to get this villager out there it goes uh he is sitting on 63 villagers very nice we're sitting on 137 villagers, so still more than double villagers than him. And sure, he's got the relics. Sure, he's got the sacred sites. Sure, he's on a uh, we're on, on a timer, but we've got a game plan. And our game plan is the Chokunu. And so the whole idea behind this unit is that we're getting it for very cheap, and it's doing so much damage. It is absolutely, it shreds things. It is just ridiculous. And so now that push is going to start. So w uh, one of the key things that we're going to be doing in, in this fast Imperial build order is pushing with our own keeps. It's really important that we are pushing with keeps. Chokunu and bombards and the real key here is the bombards if the bombards die the push will stall and you don't want the bombards to die now he's going to try and do a little bit of a raid here of course we're just going to quick wall it up on my mistake from not for not walling it earlier uh, but now chokunu gonna be able to defend pretty effectively here against this these guys still don't have their upgrades so you can see right now they're only doing six damage that will go up to 11 damage a pop that's correct 11 damage they'll go from six to 11 damage and you might look at that and think that's not a lot of damage drongo only 11 damage well that's 11 times 3 so that's 33 damage uh, and the, you need to consider the fact that these guys are really cheap boys uh we've got 14 21 and 21 so a total of 55 resources compare that to an archer which is 80 resources compare that to a hand cannoneer 240 resources you're literally paying 55 resources less than a quarter of the resources that you would pay for a cannoneer and you want to know the best part it's got better dps depending against the units and you can see we're struggling right now to take down these these uh these uh, uh elite knights uh, and he's going to try and turn his attention towards the the bombard uh, now i'm really not paying attention here i do make a lot of mistakes my my primary mistakes is not protecting my bombards i should be repairing them up so ideally when you're pushing out you're pushing out with villagers as well as bombards uh, and you're making sure that the villagers are, are always 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 right next to the bombards uh ready to defend uh, but now we're getting all of our upgrades through we are at max upgrades for our Chokunu. We've got elite upgrades. So here you see, there's a bunch of knights. 21 knights going to come in. It looks like it's a, it's a bad story right there for the Chokunu, doesn't it? Yeah, well, have a look how fast these melt. They melt so incredibly quick to the Chokunu. And these are fully upgraded ranged uh, armor on the elite knights now this is my mistake here I, ideally i should have villagers here repairing up this bombard and this really stalls out my my push you can see right here in the top right hand corner the game goes for 27 minutes it, sh it shouldn't go for more than 24 minutes uh but it's okay uh it it's it's okay because you can see just how quickly we melt that uh the, the chokudus are incredibly strong they're doing three damage a pop times three so nine damage and when you've got this many of them it's just ludicrous sacred site timer it's going to be cancelled here uh so we, we've established a position here in the middle providing line of sight with the outposts and now we are cleared to push up we're also going to make sure that we drop down the imperial palace just so that we can move a little bit faster uh, eventually we will move into the ming dynasty as well um but this this is pretty much it like at, at this point if we do an assessment we're at 22 minutes into the game i am i'm maxed i've been maxed for a long time i'm on 140 villages over on his side though he is sitting on 89 villages so he is behind more than 50 villages at this point and you can see the pop he's only sitting at 101 pop and he's going to try and get units out he's, he's barely got enough space in the base so he's he's had to come out here with all the production and now we're just going to sit on top of his production taking out units taking out the villages hopefully before the buildings get up and now our own village is going to be coming forward looking to take away this stone looking to drop down a keep and this is just going to solidify our position here and and this is why i think fast imperial at least for, for china in a lot of matchups it just makes so much sense to do because the chokunu genuinely have no counter I, 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 I am i'm satisfied to say that they, they even beat out longbow which uh, it deals with them effectively in the early stages of the game in the late game though they're just too cost effective uh, ju just simply because of this over here uh, and you can see that we, we are now adapting with a lot more uh, archery rangers we don't have them all underneath the spirit way because we're sitting on seven thousand food so it, it's not important the, the main thing is having this spirit way down ready as soon as you hit imperial just so that you can pump out units at, a, at that discounted price in the event you need to it didn't make 
make a huge difference here, but we need to prepare for that base building just in case. And now continuing to push forward. Uh, you, you can see how our push stalls out. Like, look how fast we're pushing right now, and we don't have any bombards. That, that's the point, right? Imagine two bombards here underneath. It, it's just going to be sieging all of this down so much more quickly. Uh, and, and, and that's really what the difference is. And you can see him trying to fight here. Uh, it's, it's just such a difficult uh, position going up against the Chokunu, holding in, in these little choke points. And obviously the keeps, Chinese keeps, one of the strongest keeps. In, in fact, not one of the strongest, the strongest keep in the game. Uh, it's going to come out. Uh, an another thing as well, don't repair your keeps. Just let them die. It costs way too much wood to repair them. Just just b build another one. It's so much easier. Uh, the, the wood cost on repairing, once you start talking about like 21 villages, you, you're not going to out-repair a bombard. So don't even think about it. You can you can out-repair uh, two trebs, even three trebs if you want to, but don't even try and out-repair a bombard. It's just not going to happen. Uh, but yeah, that's it. And now our bombards move up. And you can see like as soon as the bombards move out, they, they are just capable of closing out the game. We've been sieging down all of the buildings very, very uh, effectively up until this point. He pushes out again for another final push. But as you guys, as you guys know, there's just not enough units there for him. Uh, bombards coming in for a little bit of a kiss here. I think we've got 12 range. We got 12 range, but these guys like to come in nice and close. Look at look how close and personal they like to get. Come here, boy. Oh, there you go. Have a nice little kiss. And that's it. I mean, from this point, that that's pretty much it. But had these bombards been out, you know, if the, the two bombards didn't die over here, this push would have would have come to a shove at, you know, 23 minutes. But you can see the, the difference here. He's down on 90 population, barely able to get any units out. He's trying to get a culverin out, but even then it's not going to matter. And that's why I think Fast Imperial for China is actually going to make a lot of sense. I think the three towns and a Song Dynasty is actually a pretty decent play as well, just because a lot of people like, okay, we, when, you, when you're talking about two town center Song Dynasty, you're, you're thinking about the time, like what, what is your goal? Your goal is to make villages. What can't you do or... It, is, is there going to be any difference between you going two town centers and three town center Song Dynasty? You're still going to need that time. You're still going to need space. You're still going to need to wall up. You're still going to need to drop a keep. So why not just delay it by a slight amount and then really guarantee your economic position in the late game? Uh, and uh, and obviously a good game gets called. He taps out um, at this point. But th yeah, there, there was no real way for him. Uh, and th this same scenario has happened in many games in many different matchups uh I, I obviously against a more aggressive opponent it is going to be difficult for you to deal uh with the stuff that is thrown out at you uh so it, it makes sense in a in a, a matchup that you're going to expect to have a lot less pressure that you can do a base build like this or a game like this but i hope you guys have enjoyed this look at chinese uh, the, the Chinese fast imperial meta, uh, the, the way I think this is going to evolve, because I genuinely think uh, you're going to start seeing Chinese players in pro games especially look to get imperial aged before 18, 17 minutes, some some sort of timing around there. Uh, you know, whether it's 2TC song into a keep into imperial, whether it's 3TC song into a keep into imperial, I don't know exactly what it's going to be, but uh, I'm looking forward to it, and uh, I will catch you guys in the next one. Thank you for watching.